before we get started here, we have to make sure that we have numbers pinned on the front of each player's jersey, okay? Um, here at Zone, we like to use, uh, we have dry fit shirts that say Zone, and they, they have numbers assigned to them on the back. Um, you can use pin, you can use iron-on numbers, you can use the stick-on numbers, but we want to make sure we're evaluating the correct player at tryout. So make sure they're numbered. Number two, we have to make sure we have enough coaches to manage the amount of players you have. All right, so for an example, last night we had 28 guys at tryouts and we had seven zone coaches. You're going to need coaches there to, to organize. You're going to need coaches there to carry equipment. You're going to need coaches to, to manage the players and make sure they're in the correct order while they're standing in line. You're going to need coaches to throw. You're going to need coaches to hit fungos. And then you're going to need your coaches to actually evaluate and, and grade each player. So we had seven for 28 guys last night. Um, you can never have enough manpower, so make sure you have enough coaches. Our third one is make sure you have your props, okay? A couple buckets of baseballs, a buckets, buckets of smush balls if you have the younger players. Have your cones, have your stopwatches, have, have your fungos, have, have your pocket radar gun, have tees, have nets. Make sure you guys are prepared and you have all the tools you'll need to make it a successful tryout. We use a software called called Team Genius. Really, it just helps us to, to stay organized and to, to manage the players. Um, we, we do our evaluations in there. We take notes. We grade them on a, on a scale. What it does for us at the end, it's, it's a big printout, and it ranks the players. Not necessarily from best player to worst player, but it ranks them in their certain categories. So it'll have all the pop times listed for the catchers. It'll have all the running times. It'll have uh, the exit velocity, the raw velocity, and it ranks them as well as shows you the average uh, for us, it, it's really beneficial because when we're sitting in the office that, a week later and we're going through the list of the players, we have a picture of them on there. It's easy, um, you know, when you can put a face to a name to really remember who that kid was at tryout. So Team Genius is an awesome software. But just up until probably two, three years ago, we've always used pen and paper. There's nothing wrong with, you know, writing down, you know, the number and then being able to take a lot of notes. Just, uh, just make sure you stay organized. Don't lose your sheets and, uh, you know, be as detailed as you possibly can when you're at tryouts. Um, one thing we do with our tryouts is we actually hold two days of tryouts. So day one will be evaluation day. Day two will be scrimmage day. During that evaluation day, we don't have any of our current players actually come to tryouts. And the reason we do that, we want to um, get their evaluation numbers, get their measurables the last day of their, their summer season, right? If we're getting ready for fall and we take all the new players and we put them through the measurables. So you know, their, their speed, their raw velocity, their exit velocity. And we really grade them based on, on their own individual ability. And then the players that we think are good enough to make one of our teams, we'll invite them back for day two. Now at day two, all of our current players come and we play a simulated game, an exhibition game where it's very structured. We allow every pitcher to throw. Um, you know, we, we put them in positions that they would normally play on the field. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's a 10, 11 inning game you know, where each pitcher is facing four or five batters, but uh, it really gives us the best look at the new guys as well as our current players to see where they match up or where they stand against one another. Um, and then one thing that we like to do here that, that not all organizations do is we offer a sit-down evaluation, right? That goes for the players that maybe don't make day two or even the players that might get cut after day two, but we sit down with the player, we sit down with their parents, and we go over their evaluation. And the reason we do that is we want, to, we want to keep these kids playing the game. We want to make sure that they play as long as they possibly can. And sometimes for a 10, 11, or 12-year-old kid, if you cut that player, they might just say, oh, I want to play lacrosse now, or I want to go play soccer. I don't want to play baseball anymore. But we sit down with them. We look them you know, eye to eye, and we say, here are a couple things you're really good at, and here are the, the reasons why you didn't make the team. You know, Let's put together a plan to get better so that you know, in two months when we do our summer tryouts, you come and you're a lot more prepared and you're ready to go. Um, you know, and, and that evaluation process a lot of times keeps those kids playing. It keeps the parents, uh, you know, they, they appreciate it a lot more than just an email saying your son wasn't selected. We give them a, a roadmap game plan moving forward so that they can make the team the next time. And, uh, you know, it, it, it shows them where they rank. Like I mentioned earlier with Team Genius, it shows them exactly where they're at relative to the rest of the kids in their age group. And the numbers don't lie. And that's, that's a lot of the reason why we do those measurables in the beginning, because, of course, you know, certain coaches might have a, a different perspective on a player. A parent's always going to have a biased opinion of their own child, but it allows us to really write down and say, all right, well, look, the average velocity at this age was 52 and your kid's throwing 39. 
Okay, that, that doesn't lie. Or the exit velocity was 64 and your kid's exit velocity was 48. So we sit down, we give them a good detailed evaluation, we give them a roadmap and a game, uh, game plan moving forward. This way, the next round of tryouts, they're ready to go and uh, hopefully they make a better showing. So those are my, my key aspects of running the perfect tryout. And right now I'm actually gonna take you guys through a sample tryout and we're gonna pop it up on the screen here for you. So you can see right here, August 4th, 2021, we have our 10 new tryouts. Five o'clock, everybody gets there, we break them up, okay? When we break them up, we're gonna give two talks. Coach Duke is gonna talk to the parents. I'm Myself, I'm gonna talk to the players. So Coach Duke will take all the parents, you know, whether it be in the stands or by the, the concession stand. He'll talk a bit about the team and our organizational philosophy. He'll talk about the expectations and the timeline of the tryout process. What I mean by that is the timeline of the process. If we have tryouts going every single day, we'll say, okay, if you're going to get a call back for day two, you'll get a call back by tomorrow at seven o'clock. Um, if you get cut, you'll get a, a phone call or an email by tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And the reason we do that is if you don't give them a specific timeline, your phones are going to be ringing off the hook from players all over the place wondering if they made the team. We're going to discuss how many players we plan on keeping and how many teams we're going to have. You know, for certain ages, we might only have 22 kids trying out, but we're going to carry 12. So we know we're only going to keep one team. Other age groups, we might have 60 kids try out. You know, we might have two teams. If there's enough talent, we might have three, but we want to make sure that uh, we let them know in advance how many teams we plan on having. And also to explain what each, each of their players are going to be graded on and the selection process. So we explain our, our Team Genius software. So the parents don't just think we're sitting there on our phones the whole time. We're actually using our phones and the app to grade and evaluate their players, um, as well as our sit down meeting where as a staff, we sit down, we get the dry erase board up, we draw out a field, we, we, we put the players on the board based on their position and um, really selecting the players so that they're in a position to play. They're in a position to get the most playing time, get the most at bats and, and develop the best. While Duke's talking to the parents, I'd be, in, I'd be out in the outfield talking to the players. At that point, I'm talking to them about the plan of the day and, and what the tryout's going to consist of. So, you know, go through the exact game plan of what they're going to do from their warm up all the way until the end. I'll explain the importance of working hard and doing something to stand out. OK, talk about their attitude, talk about their, their effort, their, their hustle. And, you know, sometimes when you get to a tryout, you have to do something to stand out. And for some of the kids, it's, it's they're the first kid on and off the field. They're the last kid picking up the balls. You know, it shows their character. It shows their work ethic and what type, what, what type of a teammate they're going to be. And then I'll talk about tryouts are scary. It's, it's a scary time. You know, kids get anxious. They get nervous. But really just calming them down, letting them know they're, they're, they're going to do something silly, right? They might fall when they're running their home to first. They might make a couple errors. They might swing and miss but letting them know that we're looking for the all around player, not necessarily just the kid that performs the best on that day. All right. So letting them know that regardless of what happens today, they're going to be fine. Um, you know, we're going to have a good time out here today. We're going to work really, really hard and uh, we want them to leave it all out on the field. After we go through those two talks, Duke comes back out on the field and one of our coaches will put our players through a full dynamic warm up and a throwing program. The dynamic warm-up is important. We want to make sure the kids are loose. We want to make sure their legs are stretched, they're hot, and they're ready to go, as well as the throwing program, because as soon as this is done, we go right into our running. Okay, we'll have two lines. We'll have them in number order. And for the 10U, we're just measuring their home to first time. How fast can they run 60 feet? So we'll have two lines. We'll have the cones mapped out uh, ahead of time. We'll put them in number order, and we'll have two coaches with stopwatches recording their home to first time. After that, we're going to break our kids up into two groups. We're going to do raw velocity and exit velocity. So we have two batting cages. In one cage, we have kids throwing three balls, just uh, measuring their raw velocity. And then we'll have a cone or a tee set up where you have a group of kids taking three to five swings off the tee, just measuring their raw velocity or their exit velocity. I'm sorry. From there at 540, we go into our outfield segment. This is for any player that plays the outfield. They might not be a primary outfielder, but we tell our kids, if you play the outfield, you want to go show showcase your skill set. So they'll go out to the outfield, they'll get six balls hit to them. They'll get two ground balls, four fly balls, and they're going to field the ball and they're going to throw it straight to third base. Any, anybody that doesn't play th uh, the outfield at that time will go to third. They'll stand at third and they'll just receive the throws. Once that's completed, we go into our infield workout. That's where all of the infielders go to shortstop and they get six ground balls. They'll get two hit right at them. 
they'll get hit, two hit to their forehand side and they'll get two hit to their backhand side. This is, you know, moving them around, watching their footwork, evaluating how they're fielding the ball, looking at their hands as well as their throws across the first. As soon as we go through that segment, all of the first basemen will get their workout. They'll go to first, they'll get six ground balls, two at them, two forehand, two backhand. And at that time, they're fielding the ball and they're throwing it either to a player or a coach who's standing on second base, um, really the shortstop position, just receiving throws. From there, the kids that don't catch can get a drink break and take a break. Our catchers will then go through their workout. So all the kids gear up, they get six balls thrown to them, three blocking, three receiving, as well as four pop time throws down to second base. After that, we go into our on-field batting practice and pitchers workouts in the bullpen. So hitters, we'll have them in number order. They get 10 to 12 swings. Um, you know, we'll keep five to six guys in at a time while everybody else is out shagging the five balls. And as soon as the kids are done hitting, if they pitch, they go down to the bullpen with our pitching coach and they throw 10 to 12 pitches to their uh, to the catcher or e even a coach down there receiving. And that's where pitching coaches are uh, going over their their measurable numbers, how hard they're throwing, as well as getting to see what kind of pitches they throw, their location, their mechanics, and so on. Um, as soon as the, the the BP and the pitching workouts are done, we go right into our wrap-up. That's where all the players come in. We congrat congratulate them on a, on a great tryout. We wish them luck, and, and we, we reiterate, reiterate what we talked about in the beginning, how it's not the end of the day if you don't make this team. OK, there, there's there's plenty of baseball teams out there, whether it be the rec team, it be the town travel or for us, hopefully they make the zone team. But if not, um, they'll be getting a phone call. You know, we appreciate all their hard work. And really, we just try to end on a positive note and keep the kids really excited. But there you go. We've got about an hour and 40 minute tryout. That would be uh, day one for us. As soon as we finish day one, we meet as a, as a staff. We cut the players that don't make it back for day two and we get ready for day two. I mentioned earlier, day two is a, is a simulated game, right? We'll have the kids uh, in lineups before they get to the field. We'll go through a dynamic warm-up, a throwing program, and we roll right into a game. A lot of times these games drag on because we give every pitcher an opportunity to throw. We get kids two, three, hopefully four at bats if possible. But we find that this is the best way to truly evaluate the players against our current players. And then once that day two of tryouts is done, we sit down as a staff, we get that dry erase board up, and, and we rank the players based on their position, based on, uh, you know, whether or not they pitch, whether they catch. And we really try to formulate two teams um, as competitive as possible, where they're going to get the most amount of time. They're going to develop the best. They're going to play the positions that they want to play the most. Um, and you can see it, it's, it's pretty detailed. We, we try our best to be as detailed as possible, be as organized as possible. And, uh, you know, the things I mentioned before about the key aspects of running a perfect tryout, they're all really important. All right. And you, and you can't take enough notes. You can't uh, you can't be detailed enough when it comes to selecting these teams, because if there is a player that doesn't make it, well, we want to make sure we have a good list of reasons why they didn't make it and, and a good game plan for them moving forward. But I hope that helps. I, I know it was it was pretty long and drawn out. But as you can see, we, we take our tryouts pretty serious. And I think regardless of what age kids are trying out for, we as coaches have to do a good job at being prepared and being organized ahead of time before we get there.